I did, I went on this retreat with a group called Eco Dharma. And um, one of the many incredible exercises we did there um, was sitting two of us opposite each other, two burned out activists opposite each other. Um, and one would just ask the question, um, if nothing I can do is ever enough, then what can I do? And then the other of us would say something about that in response to that. And then the first partner would just repeat the question, maybe with a slightly different emphasis, maybe not. Just, okay, if nothing you can do is ever enough, then what can you do? And somehow our second answer to that was a little bit deeper. And we just repeated this to each other and, and went deeper and deeper into this question. And I found that incredibly powerful. And what I found in response to that question, you know, what if we need radical change and there isn't time for radical change? Firstly, I found deep grief. I found pain and tears and like having to accept that there are things in this world that if I could, as Robinson Jeffers put it, if I could burn my hand in a slow fire to change the future, then I would, but I can't. But then on the far side of grief, and I don't wanna, I don't know any way to honor how deep and painful and long that grief was in a conversation, but on the far side of all of that, I found that Grief kind of takes all of you and it's non-negotiable and it's overwhelming. But if you, instead of denying it, sit with it and go into it and let it break you, there comes a day when it only takes 99% of you. And you're kind of like, no, no, take all of me. But it doesn't. It's just as non-negotiable when it only takes 99% of you. And then you have to decide what to do with the 1% of you that isn't grieving. And in that space, For me, it was like, okay, actually, I, I believe I live in a dying world and I don't believe I can change that. Okay, here I am in a dying world. I'm still here. What am I going to do with my days? And then maybe I choose to try and preserve habitats to keep going species alive a little longer to create spaces of beauty and love to bear witness to the truth in whatever ways they can to challenge the injustices that I see but then it's coming from such a different motivation what what my friend Michael Dowd calls the post doom motivation because then there's no fear of burnout anymore because then all I'm doing each day is telling the story I want to tell with my days and I think burnout comes from the denial of like, oh God, I can't look at the latest data because it's just gonna make me lose all hope. And that's exhausting because you're denying something that you yourself know to be true. It's exhausting. But when we go beyond that to the place where like, okay, actually, yeah, all the data just confirms what I've accepted in myself. But nonetheless, this is who I wanna be in this context. That's not exhausting, that's beautiful. That's a joy to live each day in the way that you believe in, in the context of the truth as best you understand it. And yeah, that's dark optimism. That's, that's this post doom perspective. And that's why I think um, it's not only the antidote to burnout and it's certainly not the solution to all the problems of sustainability because ultimately sustainability is not a thing anything achieves. All things end, all things move towards their end, even the universe, all things move towards their end. So sustainability is always an impossibility ultimately. So let's not wed the meaning of our lives to sustainability. Let's not count the number of our days, but the amount of life that we put into our days. And, you know, all of us as individuals are gonna die. You know, we're all moving towards our end, um, but we've got, we've got time we've got hopefully years here together to do beautiful things with our time and that's all anyone's ever had um and yeah thank you all for being brave and honest enough to um be part of conversations like this about finding our way to that place